it was brought to my attention from a friend who know I loved Battle Rite and V Rising, so we both checked it out. Safe to say that at its state, it's a faint shadow of what those two games are. Another One MOBA huge issue that I have die in is that the game basically doesn't tell you much about heirlooms this and throws a ton of Here attributes feedback. in front of Very you when you die. Who is, doesn't even but it come to matter who the game is much with and gameplay sucks. of Battle Rite. I and the animations are only my starting and boring. This is gaming in 2022. And so with Fangs, I really wanted to highlight and emphasize that this game has a lot of potential that I'm seeing and I really want it to do well. But once you put the game out for the public and early access, you only have one chance and you have to make it count. If the game is buggy, or there's a lot of lag and stuff like that it's going to reach a lot of people and it's going to create a lot of negative experiences that can hinder and or reduce newer players from coming into the game it kind of drives them away yo everyone skeptic here Today, I wanted to talk about the current state of Fangs, the 4v4 action MOBA developed by Hidden Leaf Games. But before I go straight into the video, I want to say a little disclaimer. I will mainly be talking about the negative aspects of Fangs, so if you don't want to hear negative things about the game, I suggest you click off the video right now. I will give you 10 seconds to do so. Okay, now that we got the disclaimer out of the way, let's start the video. I'm going to keep it real with everyone here. I think Fangs went into early access a little bit too early. There are numerous problems within Fangs that are driving new players away from the game. Let's start from the beginning. That's right, I'm talking about the tutorial. If you are an experienced MOBA player, the tutorial won't seem as overwhelming because a MOBA generally has a lot of system mechanics. But for a new player to the MOBA genre, especially in Fangs, there is a lot of information overload. This information overload can be seen as early as when the game asks you to bring up the abilities menu by pressing F1. Right away, we can already spot a problem. The text are way too small. I'm currently wearing glasses right now, and even I can barely see the text. In addition, the abilities are all cluttered together, making the primary focus more on the attempts to read the text rather than the player's comprehension of the skill's details. One way that you can solve this issue is instead of making the player bring up the abilities menu themselves, you can instead play a video that showcases Ryo's abilities. If you think that is not possible, then let me show you something while I was perusing the main menu. On the main menu, there are various options. Play, Inventory, Career, Battle Pass, and Store. If you navigate to your inventory, within the Hero section, if you click on any hero, so in this case, Ryo, since that's the character they used in the tutorial, and you click on the Abilities section, well, what do you know? It displays a small video showcasing you what each ability does. Not only does it show you what the skills does visually, 
but it also gives you context on how the skills would work within a typical gameplay situation. For example, Ryo's Thunder Blast preview shows the Ryo doing two autos first before using the ability because when you land three attacks consecutively, it activates Ryo's passive, Static Shock. In this case, if Thunder Blast activates Static Shock by being the last consecutive attack, it will have an additional effect aside from the slow, it will also stun the opponent. After you finish the abilities section of the tutorial, it now talks about the shards. Shards are an important gameplay factor for Fangs, because depending on what the shard is and how many your team currently has, it can completely turn around losing games and or create a snowball effect. In the tutorial gameplay I am showing on screen, it tells you about the properties of the shard and how to capture one successfully. Okay, so what's the problem here, Skeptic? Well, the problem is that for something so important and game-changing, they only spent a small amount of time on this section. All I mainly learned in the tutorial was how to capture the shard there was not enough retention for the player to remember the different shards and their corresponding properties. I always found myself forgetting which shards did what. The only shard I remembered with ease was the life shard because green equals HP. And in addition, in lower levels of Fang's gameplay, most players would opt to just teamfight and go for captain kills rather than winning through the payload or winning through stat progression aka capturing shards, because most casual slash lower level players' primary focus is more so on micro team fights rather than macro strategies. There was not enough retention seen within the tutorial to make newer players recognize the significance of shards. One way to improve the retention is to make the player capture all three different types of shards and display their effects in a real gameplay scenario. For example, when you capture the green shard, make the player's HP super low, and once they capture it, they can see its effects, and so on and so forth, with the other shards. By doing this gameplay loop, it allows the player to visually see what the shards do and makes the significance of shards more emphasized. After the shard tutorial section, we see another instance of information overload later on, which is when the tutorial talks about augments. Augments are another core aspect of Fangs. It's basically the factor that gives the individual player depth, from playstyle to strategy. Augments are important. When the player is selecting their various types of augments, there is a lot of information overload that is happening. It shows you all the slots of the augments, displays the different naming conventions of each different augment slot. It also displays all the various skill augments that you can equip. There is not a focus point that the player can hone in on. Instead of the player learning and reading about the different types of augments, they are rather just learning about equipping whatever augment is displayed to just get the tutorial done and over with. One way that you can solve this issue is by darkening the screen and only lighting up the augment slot that the tutorial tip is currently displaying. I will show you an example on screen I made within Photoshop. In addition, within the tutorial gameplay video, when I selected a skill augment, and the tutorial tip is on the next augment slot, for example, moving from the combat augment to the utility augment, the utility augment in this case would not be selected automatically, which could cause confusion like I was within my first day impression video on Fangs, where I was wondering why I couldn't select a utility skill augment. It makes the ease of access and convenience of the player drop dramatically. There is just too much going on within the augments section, and adding the different naming conventions 
also makes it harder on retaining player retention. Artifacts, combat heirlooms, utility heirlooms, flex augments, ultimate heirlooms, boons. It would be a lot easier to remember if they were all under one naming convention in my opinion. The tutorial really needs a rework because of the nature of MOBAs and especially in FANGs due to the amount of information that the player needs to process. FANGs has a higher skill floor than other MOBAs currently. If the tutorial is not sufficient, new players to FANGs will hop in a match and when they end up losing, they will take all of the blame and get flamed by their teammates more often than not. It also doesn't help that when you finish the tutorial or finish a match, the victory screen is not visually and audibly appealing, which makes the overall satisfaction of the player reduced. That is all I have to say about the tutorial section. Moving on, I now want to talk about the UI. But before I make comments about the UI, I am going to preface this by saying the game is an early access, so I'm not going to be super harsh about it, but I will still state my genuine and honest opinion on the current state of the UI as of this recording. Okay, to start off, the UI is visually unappealing. The UI is minimalistic and doesn't have a lot of personality slash character. Now, the UI doesn't have to be super flashy, but if you asked me to list out the good points of this UI, there will be far and few that I can really list out. The main points being that it's generally easy to understand and not that difficult to navigate. Or is it? Here is a question for the viewers at home. Can you guess what that flag icon in the upper left corner displays when you click on it? I will give you 30 seconds. Ding ding ding! If you said it displays your daily and weekly missions, you would be correct. But would a new player think the flag icon is even clickable, let alone know what the flag represents? In the base menu of the UI, the mission screen is taking up quite a bit of real estate. Instead of displaying the missions blatantly on the left side, why not have the flag icon be the main source of your missions? Now, I understand it's mainly for convenience, but if that's the case, why would you need to add the extra tab? It doesn't look like a clickable button on the surface, and the icon is not an easy depiction for new players to recognize. For a missions icon, wouldn't it be more recognizable if the icon was a checklist? But again, that is just my opinion. Another aspect about the UI that I want to discuss is the lack of guidance. I said I was done with the tutorial section, and I technically am done. But why does the tutorial not extend to the main menu? Like I said in my previous Fangs video, I highly dislike mobile games, but they have a really good tutorial system because they literally walk you through everything from the gameplay to the menu. They walk through it with you step by step. When I played Fangs for the first time, I saw a red dot next to the inventory section and knew right away that it was a notification. But if you are not a gamer, would you be able to recognize that? The problem with the UI in general is that it assumes that the audience has pre-found knowledge on typical game menu systems and doesn't bother walking you through each and every section. Rather than just assuming the player has pre-found knowledge, 
why not just give the player a choice as to whether or not to skip the main menu navigation tutorial or to allow them the ability to explore the main menu sections on their own. By giving the player a choice, it reduces the amount of confusion a new player can have and it also allows flexibility for others who just want to learn as they go, aka skipping the navigation tutorial to not have their time wasted. Moving on from the UI, let's talk about the gameplay. Day 1 of the Early Access in Fangs, a game that has a relatively higher skill floor and requires a lot of micro precision because most abilities in Fangs are skill shots. And due to this, it creates an environment that is intense and stressful. When you see your teammate miss 90% of their abilities or makes a macro mistake, or you're the one missing your abilities and making the macro mistake, it becomes frustrating for everyone on the team and it can create a hostile environment. Most people would not even consider the thought that the teammate may be new to the game and they would start harassing them, either by calling them out in the team chat, griefing the game entirely by running it down, or going AFK. Now, I understand, this behavior is not exclusive to Fangs, but what I do want to hone in on is what most people would do when there are toxic players in the game. Can you guess what it is? If you said report them, you would be correct. But on day one of the early access, at the end of the game, there was no report feature. They did add the report feature later on, but this was a detriment to the early growth of the game and can create misrepresentation of the Fangs community. New players that were getting flamed will assume that the Fangs community is toxic and will leave the game to play something else because there are plenty of alternatives. On a side note, at the time of this recording, there is a bug that if a player in a match disconnects, you can't report them on the scoreboard end screen because their names don't show up. Continuing on from the gameplay, I want to talk about the available modes that you can play right now in the Fangs Early Access at the time of this recording. The only mode that is currently available is Casual. There is no ranked mode available at the moment. By not having a ranked mode, it creates a lot of unbalanced matches within the casual matchmaking. Now, I did read in the Fang's Discord that there is hidden MMR, but if so, why am I still getting matched with new players 90% of my games? I played the game for at least 3-4 to four days now, and I'm still getting matched with new players, which leads to most of my matches ending up with my team getting stomped by experienced players in matches that last up to 15 minutes at max. Maybe I'm just unlucky, but since I enjoy Fangs, I can deal with the unbalanced matchmaking. But for new players to the game, this could be a quit moment for them. In League of Legends, new players can choose to play against the AI to get a general feel for the game with no pressure. They can practice CSing, they can learn their champion's kits, jungling, itemization, etc. There is no pressure to perform. In Fangs, the only things a new player can play is the casual game mode. And like I said plenty of times throughout the video, I understand that it's early access but because of that, you have to make sure that the matchmaking is fair and balanced for everyone to ensure that new players are having fun learning the game and that experienced players are getting challenging matches that test their micro and macro abilities. If you don't believe me, here are my screenshots of unbalanced matches. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Now that I've talked about the matchmaking experience, I now want to transition over to actual gameplay elements. As I prefaced multiple times in this video, the game is an early access, so take these notions that I'm about to exaborate on with some level of leniency. To start off, the optimization of the game and the overall vibe of the game feels too early to be pushed out. There are numerous amount of bugs ranging from UI bugs to actual gameplay bugs. The visuals of the game does not have enough clarity which can cause teamfights to be mosh pits of abilities and what you can discern becomes less and less visible over time. In addition, abilities in general can be hard to see which can make dodging them and landing them harder than it should be. Knowing what is going on within the game is crucial to making key decisions that can impact the overall result of the match. If you can't see what abilities are being used, or the range of an ability is misleading, it can create moments where the level of play is hindered, not because of the players themselves, but because of the visual information being misrepresented, leading to lower quality matches overall. Along with the visual effects, the sound effects affect the match in an entirely different way. Sound effects can affect the level of feedback that players receive when they do an action. In this current state of the game, the sound effects are lackluster, and it doesn't provide the level of feedback that players from other similar MOBA titles would feel. So. For example, on the victory screen, when the animation plays, there is no announcer voice line that says victory in an exciting voice. By having this simple voice line be absent within the game, it can reduce the amount of satisfaction a player feels dramatically, and it also applies to the hero's auto attacks and abilities. In a game where micro precision is emphasized, the gameplay visuals and sound effects need to be pristine in order for players to enjoy this emphasized aspect that Fangs is pushing out. Because of the lack of feedback in terms of visuals and sound effects, players are going back to other games similar to Fangs that has a more polished and optimized gameplay. And in addition, they're even comparing Fangs to their game in terms of gameplay. And what I mean by their game is other games similar to Fangs. Why am I even making this video in the first place? I'm making this video because I actually enjoy the gameplay of Fangs. It feels like a refreshing take on the MOBA genre, and it has lots of micro emphasis coupled with macro strategies that can create multiple game scenarios which makes the gameplay loop fun because there is always something to explore. You can experiment with different augments, which can change up your playstyle, and that in turn can also change your strategy. Having this level of variance is really awesome, but the overall flaws within Fangs are too apparent, which overrides the fun aspects of Fangs. When the tutorial is overwhelming and confusing, when there is a lack of an AI mode for new players to learn the game without pressure, when the matchmaking is unfair and unbalanced, when the gameplay is lacking visual and sound feedback, when you can't select the main gameplay maps within training mode, ultimately, you find yourself with an unfulfilling and unsatisfying experience that can impact your overall thoughts of things and can lead to less players sticking with the game and causing them to go back to other titles in the genre that are more well known and polished. Just like a good friend would point out that there is food stuck in their teeth, 
I'm saying all of this because I love Fangs. It has a lot of potential, but the game itself, it's too unpolished at its current state. And like I said in my previous video, you only have one chance to make a good first impression. I said everything that was on my mind, and now I will say one last thing. To the developers of Fangs, I ask you this. What is your goal with Fangs? Are you trying to make a game that is just another alternative in the MOBA genre? Or are you trying to make a game that lasts for years, that has an enormous community filled with players that are dedicated to the game internally and externally, that has an international competitive scene that rivals even the likes of giants such as League of Legends, that has dedicated content creators making content on the game through videos or live streaming. What is the goal with Fangs? Hidden Leaf Games, the ball is in your court and everyone is watching. Okay, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. So without further delay, I want to thank everyone that has watched the video up to this point. I'm not that well spoken and I'm not that smart, but hopefully some of my points and thoughts got through to you. But regardless, I highly appreciate you sticking around and I hope everyone here has a great day afternoon, evening, wherever you're at, and until next time. Bye!